Okay. Let's go with this one. So this is what I really want to do. So this is one you had last time, right? I think we ran out of time, right? We're doing this one. So A points to C, C points to D. So let me just start mapping that out. A points to C, C points to D, right? The pre, the pre means before, so it points to the thing, other thing. So C also points to E, okay? B, D, and E all point to F. B, D, and E. Okay, so F will be like here. That's right, that's right. I'm starting to remember this now. And then B is like here. And B, D, and E all point to F. And F points to G and H. F points to G and to H. And G and H point to I. Okay, now i got to redo it because I ran out of room. I didn't realize how far I'd go. So there's the general thing. I just got to make it nicer now. We've been through this. I'm going to do this real quick over here now. Change the thing. So here's, well, this will be, this will be A. And A points to C. And C points to D and E. And D and E point to, D and E point to F. And F points to G and H, which point to I. And then also, I, I forgot B, B points to F also. B points to F. Okay. All right, so, right, so I just followed the precedent. Remember how to do that? Everybody okay with that part? Just whatever comes before, pre, before, points at, at whatever. Okay, oh, I got to put the numbers on there. 12, 6, 4. So for A is 12, B is 6, C is 4. I'm just going alphabetical. 12, 6, 4. Oh, 12, 16, 4. Come on. 12, 16, 4. 12, 16, 4. 8. Now I'll do the next three. 8, 1, 4. So 8, 1, 4. 8, 1, 4. 1, 8, 1. G-H-I. 1, 8, one, okay. And I got to put on here the start and the end. Remember, is everybody, everybody good so far to there? See how I do the precedent thing, make the arrow diagram, and now I have to, um, have to put the start and the end on there. So the start will be right here. And do you see what that's going to point at? It's going to point at A and at B, right? So a lot of times people forget the B because B has nothing else pointing to it also, right? And then the end over here, I is going to be the only thing pointing at the end because the only thing that's not pointing to anything else, right? The end and the start are always zero by themselves. Okay. And then, then because they're saying, this is number three, again in 8.3, because they're saying to do the critical path method, so this is what you really want to get clear for the practice exam today, the real exam tomorrow, is critical path means to do the backflow add-up thing. Is that making sense? You want to see how, how much the paths take. So this is where I start at the end and I put the brackets or the boxes or whatever you want to do, zero, and then kind of add backwards. So this will be, oops, come on, again. All right, this will be one. Then add backwards to G, that'll be 2. This will be 8. Everybody tracking with me? I'm just adding. Oh, no, that should be 9, shouldn't it? Should be 9. I'm just adding backwards. So I went 0, go back to I, 0 plus 1 is 1. And 1 at 8 is 9, 1 at 4. This should be 5. Everybody seeing that? It should be six. Why did I say five? I'm just having trouble today. Yeah, you're supposed to add the bracket number. That's what I just messed up on. Is that too small? Can you all see that? Can you see what I'm doing there? Is that okay? Hector, how's your eyes? Can you see that? Yeah. And all good there? 
So I'm just adding backwards. Adding backwards on all those. Right, so I always add the bracket numbers. Right? So I add this. So I add the 2 to the 4 to get 6. Not the 1. Right? You always add the, that way you keep the running total. Right? We good there? So you just add the bracket number. So, so next, I'm at 6. I'm going to add that to 8 here to get 14. Right? I don't, I don't add 4 plus 8. I'm adding the bracket 6 to the 8. Right? We good with that? And um, so, it's a weird one. Um, oh, I messed up. I'm tired of this diagram. It's just all, it's all, I need a new one. Wouldn't you add the nine to the Yep, you're right. That's what I messed up on. Exactly. It's just too small. It's making me mess up. That's my excuse anyway. All right. So I'm just getting all messed up with this diagram. I'm going to, I'm going to redraw out a new paper a little neater. Boy, these are so painful. All right. So start, start here. I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, go to A, go to C. Go to A and go to C. Okay, go to A and C goes to D and E. There's a lot of layers. And, oops. From D and E, D and E go to F, right? D and E go to F. F goes to G and H. G and H go to I. And I goes to the end. All right, one more time on this thing. And let's put in the numbers. All right, so 0, 0, 12, 4, 1, 16. So... And the start is here, 0, 12, 4, 16. So, 0, 12, 4 for C, 4, 8, 1. East 1? Yeah. Oh, and the B, I get the B in there. B comes on down here. Start goes to B, and then B goes to F. Okay. Start goes to B, and B goes to F. Okay, and then um, B is 16. All right, and then F is 4. And G is 1 and H is 8. Bless you. H is 8 and um, I is 1. End is 0. Okay, yeah. All right, let me try again. Now I'm going to get a little more space, I guess. I'm going to add them backwards. They're still always so cramped. So, yeah, so you start here, bracket, or I'll put a box or whatever, zero. Okay, then add backwards. It's going to be one. Everybody good? So I just go zero plus one is one. So you just you take the bracket or the box and add the parentheses behind it. Huh? You add the, the box with the parentheses behind it. So this will become 2, this will become 9, everybody good that way, right? 1, add 8 is 9, box, add parenthesis, 9. Just walk it backwards. Now, yeah, exactly, Jasmine, right, what Jasmine was saying. When we go back here to F, remember if there's two ways back, you have to take the higher road, right? So H has got a 9 going back to F, and G's got a 2 going back to F. You're supposed to do the 9, right? Whenever you have a higher road, you take that. So I was messing that up. So this should be 13, right? 9 plus 4 is 13. Everybody see that? Right? Because you're going to take one of these boxes, either the 9 and, or the 2, and go back to F. There's two ways to go back to F. So you take the higher one. 9 plus 4 is 13. Good. Now, from the 13, you go back to the B, which would be 29. Back to the E here, which would be 14. And back to the D, which would be 21. 
Right, what did I do? I just added 13 back to 8, back to, you know, back to those 3, from the F, back to those 3. We good so far? It's making sense. We're going to have to use this math. Okay, now D and E can go backwards to C, can't they? Those are two roads backwards to C. Am I losing you? Are we good there? This is 14. Right? D and E are two roads backwards. Darn it. It's such a mess this diagram is. All right. So E. E, E, E. So um, two roads back. So D and E are two roads back to C. We take the high road, which would be D. So D is 21 plus 4, 25. that good? Right? See, D and E, I could go 14 or 21. I take 21 plus 4. Right? Box plus parenthesis. 21 plus 4. And then straight back to A. 25 plus, right? 25 right here. Plus 12 is, what, 37? Right? That good. And now, 37 back to start or 29 back to start. Take the high road. 37. Right? Well, it's 37 plus zero. 37. Is that good? We finally got the diagram. All right, there's our diagram. Now they want me to schedule a job to processors using critical path. So I'm going to move this 20, 29 over. not in the way. Okay, so then down here, I'm going to have to do processor 1, processor 2, and make a, a timeline with the job. Okay, so here we go. So the priority, how do we decide? What's the priority list? It's critical path. Now, what do we mean by critical path? It's, it's just like decreasing time. It's almost the same as decreasing time. It means highest box, but you take the box number instead of the parenthesis number. That's the only difference. Does that make sense? You see the difference between decreasing time and critical path are almost the same. You always take the highest number. It's just with decreasing time... Decreasing time, you're just looking at the parenthesis numbers, which is how long just that job takes, right? The, the box number is how long from there all the jobs to the end. The path, in other words. Does that make sense, the difference? So the critical path plan's a little smarter because it doesn't just look at that one individual job, but how much work from there to the end, the whole path, right? Like when I put a, a 9 next to this H parentheses eight. Everybody clear what that means? The parentheses number is how long job H takes. H takes eight hours. But the box nine means from H to get to the end, there's nine hours of work, right? You gotta do H for eight, I for one, and then you're done. That's why it's nine. Everybody see that? So that's the difference. The box numbers are how long the path takes all the way to the end. The parentheses numbers are how long just that job takes. So with decreasing time, so, so they'll tell you on the practice test today and on the real test tomorrow, there'll be one, probably one problem that gives you a big map and says do it with decreasing time. And that means you're just looking at the parentheses numbers. You're not even going to have box numbers, you know, on those. And then there'll be another one that says, okay, do it with critical path like we're doing right now, which means you've got to first get all the box numbers by the add backwards thing called the backflow algorithm, add backwards thing. Got to get that first off. And then you got to pay attention to the box numbers whenever you're deciding a priority decision. Higher box number goes first. Just like higher parenthesis number went first for decreasing time. Did I update the homework or did, did it say this was due? Is it good? Do tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. That's good. All right. So here we go. So processor one. So... Uh, what are the jobs we can, what are the options? We, we always, arrow diagram first, right? It's always arrow diagram. That's the main thing. 
Priority list is very much secondary. So looking at the arrow diagram, what are my options? What jobs could I start with? What are the only ones that come off the start? A and B. Huh? It's got to be A or B. They're the only ones that you can get to from the start. So how do you know which one you're going to do? Well, whichever one has a higher box number, right? Highest box number. So A has 37. B has 29. We're going to start with A. So A is going to go first, and A is a 12-hour job. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A is a 12-hour job. We're going to run out of room, huh? I'm gonna, i got to make that smaller. We're going to run out of room. There's a lot of hours up there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 hours, A is the 12-hour job. See, everybody see how we decided that? I'm probably not going to be able to do, have time this whole thing. I'm just going to get you started and then break off to another one. So that makes sense. So A was a 12-hour. Notice I only, it's not 37. I don't put 37 hours. That The box number next to A is how long from there to the end, the path, right? 37 hours of work from A all the way to the end. But A itself is only a 12-hour job, the parenthesis number, right? Now, why did I start with A instead of B? Because the box number 37 is higher than 29 because there's more work to the end. If I was doing decreasing time as my priority, I would have started with B, actually, because B has a, is a longer job all by itself, isn't it? 16 hours. And that's what you pay attention to if they say decreasing time algorithm, right? All right, so processor two, what job is he going to get? He's going to get the B, right? That's the only other job available right now, A and B. So he gets the B. That's a 16-hour job. So this is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So he's going to go 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12. There's 16. So B is a 16-hour job for processor two. So everybody good with that? Do you see why we started with A? Because his box number's higher. So with critical path, it's the box number. If it was decreasing time, they'll both be on the test. If it's decreasing time, it'd just be the parenthesis number. The higher parenthesis number would go first. Okay, so then you go say, okay, what job is done first? A, A is done first. So you go, okay, A is done. Uh, processor 2 is down here working on B. At, that's the state of affairs at 12 hours. Processor 1 is like, I'm ready for a new job. What jobs are available for processor 1? Only C, huh? There's just no other options. Everybody see that from the arrow diagram? I don't need to think about priorities or critical path or whatever. Who cares? The arrow diagram is first, and usually he only gives us one option, and this is that case. C is the only job available, right? Can't work on any, because B's, B's not done yet, so you can't go to any of that stuff. Only C is available. So C is a four-hour job, so that'll take right to 16, won't it? From 12 to 16. Careful, careful to not accidentally grab the box numbers. The parentheses are how long the job takes, right? C is a four-hour job. Good. Go forward in time to the next completed job. Well, that's at 16 hours. Both jobs are done. So it's 16 hours simultaneously. B is done and C is done. Okay. Processor 1 goes first. They're both ready for a job, but it's always you start at the top. Processor 1 goes first. What jobs are available for processor 1? Which ones? Correct. D and E. D and E are both available. Not, not F yet, because you gotta have you gotta have D and E done before you can get to F. So D and E are available. So which will processor one goes first? Which job will he get? D. So we have options. So when they have options, we go to the priority list. Priority says higher box number. So D has a higher box number, 21, than E. So he'll get job D, which is an eight-hour job. So add eight, 16, add eight, take you out to 24. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24, job D. Processor two, meanwhile, is going to get job E, which is a one-hour job. That was a quick one. There's the E, 17 hours. It's a one-hour job for processor two, right? The only other job available. 
Move forward to seven. Good. Am I going too quick? That's okay. Move forward to 17 hours. The next job that's done, right? We always go forward to the next job that's done. E is done. Processor two finished E. He's ready for a new job, but nothing's ready. Everybody see that? He's going to have idle time to 24, maybe even more. We'll see. Is that too quick? Everybody tracking with me? See how that happened? At 17, processor 2 finished E, but look, D's not done yet. D's still being worked on right now. At 17 hours, right? At 17 hours, when processor 2 finished, D's not done yet. You can't work on F until D's done. Right? So nothing, nothing more is available. So idle time for processor 2 up to 24 hours. When the, you just go forward to the next job being completed, something might change then. So at 24 hours, job D is done. Cross it off. We good? Now, again, processor one goes first. They're both ready. What jobs are available? What's available? F. Only F. This is a big bottleneck, isn't it? Everything keeps kind of cramming down. Only F is available. So processor one's going to get F which is a four-hour job. So 25, 26, 27, 28, four-hour job. F, what's processor two going to do? More idle time, huh? More idle time? Not 24, what did I write that? 28. Okay, now, uh, now F's done. What jobs are available? G and H, right? Processor 1 goes first. They're both ready. Processor 1 is first. Which job? So we have options. So do your priority. What's the priority? The 9, the higher box number. So who goes first? Processor 1. So he actually gets the H, doesn't he? 8-hour job. 29, 30, through 1, through 2, through 3, through 4, through 5, through 6. 8-hour job. H. Processor 2 gets G. A 1-hour job to 29. I'm Right, not 28 too big. 28, 29 for G. G, am I making that okay? G. G to 29. Okay. Um, go forward, 29. G's done. Any jobs available? Can I, can I go on to I because G is done? No. Does everybody know that, right? You've got to have both those done to go on, right? It's not either one, it's both. So you can't go on to I, so more idle time for processor 2 to 36. At 36, H is completed, I is available, processor 1 will do it. it takes it one hour, I, 37, we're done with the job, it's over, 37 hours, there we go. There's the schedule for the job. Processor 1 did almost all the work. Good? Does that make sense how we did that? We did. That's the whole thing, huh? We made the arrow diagram. We did the backflow thing. We mapped out the schedule. All from just a list of jobs and how long they took and what has to be done before them. Good? Can I flash off that? You okay with that? So A, C, D, F, H, I. Okay. So on this one, I'm just going to do part C here. Part A and B are normal. I just don't got time for them. Um, so, remember air, what's called relative air? Relative air was time minus optimal over optimal, right? You want to have that in your 3 by 5 card for both these chapters. And so, on this one, they're telling us that the finishing time was 23 hours and the optimal time is 23 hours. In other words, the thing was optimal. So that's why we get a zero, because it's going to be 23 minus 23 over 23, which is zero over 23, which is zero. So the answer is zero. Is that okay on that one? I'll flash off that if you're okay with that. Okay, so the last, last thing is independent. So last thing. Sometimes tasks are independent. And what that means is you don't really have to do some things before other things. Suppose you're making Thanksgiving dinner. You've got to make the green beans, you've got to make the turkey, you've got to make the potatoes, 
it doesn't really matter what you do before what, right? You don't have to have the, the green beans done before the turkey. You don't have to have the rolls done before the whatever, right? The order, you know, some jobs, the order doesn't really matter. Whereas building a house, you got to have the walls before you do the roof. You got to have the plumbing underground before you do the foundation. You know, there's orders that matter. But with some jobs, the order doesn't matter. Those are called independent. Independent. They don't depend on one another. Um, order does not matter. So sometimes you have jobs where the order doesn't matter. These are way easier because you don't have an arrow diagram you got to keep looking at. There's no arrows. Nothing leads to anything else. You can do any job anytime you want. These are way, way easier. So what are they saying on this problem? They are saying, um, I don't know, I... Okay, so, so again, independent, you know, it's, they're, they're separate. So they want me to schedule a job with these um, three processors critical path algorithm. Okay, so I'm going to, here's the, here's the different jobs. No arrow diagram because they're independent. Much, you'll like this, this is super easier. Even, even for three processors, even critical path, it doesn't matter. It's all easy. Processor 1, processor 2, processor 3. Here we go. hope I have enough room. I tried to leave enough. All right. I don't know. We'll see. I have to squeeze them in. Um, okay. So here we go. Do these straight. So... All right, so they're saying critical path. Remember what critical path means? Highest number first. Right? I Notice this time I don't write box number because there are no boxes. There is no arrow diagram. So it's, it's really just their own number. Decreasing time would actually be the same as critical path when they're independent, because there's no paths. It's just their number. Does that make sense? So critical path is only a big pain, like in the last problem, where we have that big arrow diagram, we gotta add everything backwards. So when they say critical path on independent, it just means highest number. Don't worry about any paths or any boxes or anything. Okay, here we go. So um, it's time to start a job. You can pick any of them. There's no arrow diagram. Pick any job you want. So how do we decide which job for processor one? What's the priority schedule? Highest number, right? Does that make sense? So I just look at those jobs. I just pick the highest number. Which one's high? The B? The B, right? The B is seven. So B will be a seven-hour job. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven-hour job. Processor one will do B. Good so far. And then processor 2, we'll give processor 2 the next highest job, which would be what, the D, the 5? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's a D. And then the next highest job is the F4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me put the 5 here. 5 there. Good so far? very neatly. Okay. And um, so everybody tracking with me? Am I racing ahead of you and making no sense at all? <laughs> Is that okay? So independent again, you have total freedom. No arrow diagram. Pick any job you want at any time. Okay, next, so are we good? What's, um, how do we, what do we do next? Next you ask, who, what's the first job completed? So what's the first job done? Be this F right here at four hours, right? That's the first job done, so he's ready. He comes back to the, to the manager, to the boss office and says, hey, I'm ready for a new job. I finished the mashed potatoes or whatever. So four hours are over, he's ready for a new job. What's the next job we're going to give him? 
Any of those threes, huh? These are all equal. C, E, and G, they're all equal times. So any of them are fine. I guess I'll just go alphabetical and give them C. I think that's probably what they did. Yeah, that's what they did down here. I'll give them C. One, two, three. C, seven hours. Three, we're at seven hours because so it's a three-hour job after the four hours. Is that good? What's the next person that comes to the office? Right here, processor two, at five hours, is ready for a new job. So what are you going to give him? It would be like E. That one's next, right? Three hours, three-hour job E. So give him a three-hour job E. That's his six, seven, eight. That's, when that's getting off a little bit, isn't it? I'm getting off of my numbers. That's job E. Eight-hour job E. And next one ready for a job. Oh, it's seven hours. These guys are tied. At seven hours, seven hours. These guys are tied. They're both ready. Processor one always goes first when they're tied. He'll get job G for three hours. Eight, nine, ten. G. What else is there? Who's, who's ready next? The, the processor three. He gets job A for two hours. Eight, nine. And that's it, right? We're done? All the jobs. So that's really simple, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to deal with that arrow diagram. Just next, 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 done. You know, the arrow diagram is the part that's hard. So independent, there'll be like one question with independent on the exam. You know, don't worry about arrow diagrams. There's no order, nothing. The order never matters other than the priority list. They'll give you, and they'll, they'll always say critical path. I won't pull anything else with independent. Well, I could say alphabetical. I, I think I say critical path. I just can't remember. It probably just says critical path, which means highest number. It might say alphabetical, which means start with A, then B, then C. Good on that? Is that okay? Questions? So that's, that's the same as this answer here, huh? which was the right answer. All right. So the air. Um, uh, air, again, remember, is, is time minus optimal over optimal, just like it was in the last chapter. So it's the time. So the time was 10 hours for the job we just did, right? If you look back, didn't we finish at 10 hours? The last, everybody was done at 10 hours, huh? That's called the finishing time, right? Everybody, everything else was idle time up to there. The, the whole job got done at 10 hours. I was the last person to finish the last job. So the whole job was done at 10 hours. That's the finishing time. Well, it turns out that's not the best. Here's, here's, here's a, an optimal answer that actually does a little better. So notice critical path isn't perfect, is it? There, there are other ways to do things that are better, it turns out. And that's, there it is. All the jobs are done in nine hours. Nobody wastes any idle time. So the optimal answer is nine hours, it turns out. So the critical path method was wasteful by one hour. So 10 minus 9 over 9, which is 1 ninth on your calculator, you know, just whatever that percentage is. I think it's 11.1%. Yeah. So there we go. That's the percentage here. So, that's, so that means the schedule we just made is 11% is error compared to the best possible schedule. It's 11% waste, in other words. Does that make sense? That's, that's the point of the chapter, is trying to manage in the best way and not waste. So the point of that example is even the critical path method isn't always best. There's, there's often some error. It's not perfect. right? There's, sometimes there's a better way, but... But still, critical path is pretty good. So I'm going to flash. Let me just give you this last fact, and you'll be ready for your practice exam. That is, um, it was proven, 1969, whatever, who cares. It was proven that with independent tasks, this is the last little formula you'll need that's on the exam. It's simple to use, kind of like the air formula. Independent tasks with... Crit, crit, critical, I can't spell and talk. With critical path, with critical path method, algorithm, we want to call it, um, the error is always less than n minus 1 over 3n 
where n equals number of processors. It was proven. That was a mathematical result relative to the efficiency of management. So let me, let me show you. Sometimes those formulas look weird without an example. So suppose you see a question on the practice exam today. I don't even remember if it's on the practice exam or the real exam tomorrow. I think there is one on the real exam tomorrow. And it says, hey, um, how much air, what's, what's the maximum amount of air for um, independent, independent tasks with the critical path method? You would just use the formula n minus 1 over 3 n. And, and they might say n equals 4 processors. So you would just take the 4 and plug it in. That's all. 4 minus 1 over 3 times 4, which would be what? 3 twelfths, which divided on your calculator, 25% error. Done. Does that make sense? What that's saying is um, this guy named Ron Graham proved in 1969 that this is really a pretty good method the, uh, with independent tasks. With independent, notice that's independent. That last kind, like Thanksgiving dinner, where the order doesn't matter. With independent tasks, critical path works pretty good. Your error is never more than n minus 1 over 3n, where n is the number of processors. So if you had four processors, you're never going to make more than a 25% error using the critical path method to schedule a job that has independent tasks. All right, that's enough facts, huh? We good? Let's... Uh,